We're going to check out a few for your consideration campaigns here. Let's see what A24 is pimping out. No noms for Bo, unsurprising. Dicks, uh, kind of funny that they were trying to go for noms for that. That seemed like a really annoying movie, but never watch this. All Dirt Roads Taste of Salt. They're going for a bunch of noms here that never happened. Bo's Afraid. Consider Best Picture. Yeah, that was never happening. Uh, actor maybe could have happened. Maybe some acting. Screenplay, no way. Maybe editing. Cinematography, maybe. Sound, maybe. I don't remember much about the score. Did you watch Bo? Yeah, we watched in theaters together. Yeah. Um it it wasn't badly made. It just wasn't a really. It wasn't compelling. Like it wasn't. It wasn't, a it wasn't that movie. interesting. No. No. To some people, it it really was, but um, no. yeah. Not us, and definitely not the Academy. All right. right. Yeah, I, I didn't have a problem with the way it was made, though. So if it, if it had won like an award for cinematography or something, yeah, I'd have been fine with exactly. That. Uh, Larry Charles, director of Borat, made a movie that went to TIFF that I could have seen but didn't because it looked annoying. And it also has Nathan Lane, which uh, was also in Bo is Afraid. Nathan Lane was getting pushed big time for Best Sporting Actor this year. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. At least from A24. Um, this looked like maybe the most annoying movie ever made, so I didn't watch it. I can't believe A24 is trying to do all these. Maybe Best... Is there a Best Song? Yeah, here we go. Because it is a musical, so you'd expect they'd at least try for that. Dream scenario. Loved the movie. Sure. Best screenplay? It's a great concept. Concept alone, I could see them pushing for screenplay. Uh, Best actor, actor even? Nick Honestly, Cage? Nick Going Cage? For it. Yeah. Why not? On it, he, that is one of his best roles. Have you seen the movie yet? No, I haven't. Okay, it's I, great. I, I do want to see it. but <laughs> Yeah. Um, screenplay and, and actor are the two that I would say... Like you could totally, totally get, um, but it is like kind of a, you know, not an Oscar movie. Uh, Earth Mama never saw it. Iron Claw. It's funny that they push for it. And zero nominations. That's fun. Occupied City, Past Lives. I'm just gonna open up some of these tabs. So it's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, Zone of Interest is a twenty four. Um, Earth Mama didn't watch it. No comment. Iron Claw, Scoot's a wrestler. He watched it. He thought it was meh. And so it looked kind of uninteresting to me. Everybody's saying it's great. I'm ecstatic that it got nominated for zero awards so that I don't have to prioritize watching it. Will I watch it eventually? Sure. But the fact that I don't have to watch it this year means I get to save some time. Sorry, everybody. Occupied City, never watched. Steve McQueen. Sorry? Steve McQueen. Oh, was it actually? Oh, that was his documentary, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, he did an A20. Okay, I do love Steve. Second favorite director. Can't believe I didn't see that. Thank you for pointing, pointing that out. Probably should have, yeah. Probably should have watched it. Probably should watch it, yeah. <laughs> Damn, but maybe that'll be on this. my... Uh, is it available to watch right now? Let's find out. I, I think it's like fucking six hours long, though, or some shit. Just make it Occup- a miniseries. <laughs> exactly. Occupied City, four hours, six minutes long. Documentary History War, Steve McQueen. Not written by Steve McQueen, but I guess it's a dog. Uh, 7.8 out of, out of 10 user rating, 75 Metascore from 25 critics. So barely any people watched it, barely any critics watched it, and it's getting like positive, but not like what I would really expect or want out of a Steve McQueen movie. So no fucking wonder I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm definitely not watching it before I make my Oscars video. Four hours long and not even like fucking incredible reviews or anything. Anyway, love you, Steve. Make another fictional narrative again, please. Um, I'm hyped for whatever you do next, I guess. Past Lives, loved it. Uh, shot for the Sky. Makeup and hairstyling, I can't believe... They didn't watch their own movie if it thinks it deserves that because that, that was one of my criticisms. Visual effects for what? For everything. Sorry, where were the... Is it one of those, like, Wolf of Wall Street, like, the best visual effects are ones you don't notice sort of thing? Because I don't remember I any don't, visual Yeah, I don't remember I any super crazy visual effects. Um, 
I think they're just shooting for everything, which is a s- dumb strategy. Like, if you're a studio, just watch the movies that you're campaigning for, and you'll know. I, I mean, maybe it's. I mean, I would know if I was the head of the studio, but maybe the people making the money don't. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't hurt. Maybe people just want to see a movie that has 17 nominations. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, I agree. And then, yeah, does it have a screenplay now? I forget. I think it does. Uh, Priscilla didn't watch. A um, lot of Coppola's out there. And uh, Sophia's not on the top of my list. So um, maybe another day we will watch it. Also, Elvis really soured my <laughs> appetite for my Elvis appetite movies. for Elvis movies. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up, never heard of it. What is this? Oh, Kelly, Kelly Reichardt. People like people like Michelle Williams. Okay, yeah. the new Kelly Reichardt. I don't. I don't even know where I was supposed to see it. Hong Chow from uh, she was in Everything Everywhere, right? Um. Okay. Well, is best is casting a-, a category now? I don't know if that's an actual category, but maybe A24 is just shooting so... <laughs> they maybe were doing so they're so ambitious about their for, for your us. consideration. Sorry, wait. There's no best category. Sorry, cast, casting category, right? That doesn't exist, right? I don't recall it ever existing. That's not a real award. Are they hoping that they invent that category for this year's Oscars? The casting on this movie was so good that it needs an award created for it. Usually they give best casting to just best oct- actor in a biopic anyway, which is what best casting really is. <laughs> best actor who just happens to be in a biopic. Did I mi- mix up Hong Chow and Stephanie Zhu? What was Hong? I remember last Hong year's Oscars. The Whale. The Whale. Thank you. I remember last year's Oscars. Okay, it was The Whale. I was doing it from name recognition only and only having Scoot saying the name. <laughs> as my point of reference. And I was like, okay, well, I know in some edit of some Oscar thing that we saw, Scoot said the name and I got offended. Can we agree that the name Hong Chow sounds racist? Like if you ask... When you say it, yeah. If you ask me to like name a if, Chinese person, I'd be like, I don't know, Hong Chow. I'm just gonna yeah, say, when it, you say it, it sounds very racist. Doesn't it? Scott. <laughs> so so that, that's what I was pulling from. So I was the racist the whole time. You got me. All right. Talk to me. Fun movie. It had good directing. I would never consider this to be best picture material. Um, she was great. Uh, screenplay, no way. This is like they need to really tighten up these. Uh, they re- they really need to tighten these up. They they're 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 aiming too high. This is this is like the Lion King twenty nineteen trying to campaign for. Best actor for voice acting, which did happen, by the way, to literally every actor in the film, except James Earl Jones, and only because I later discovered that they reused a bunch of his dialogue from the 1994 film. They tried to they tried to do Lion King 2019 con- for your consideration for every category except animated feature, which is crazy because that's the one that they maybe could have gotten. Yeah, tighten this up, A24. You're being way too ambitious with this. This movie was bad. Sorry. Jesse Eisenberg, though. Yeah, well, he's the reason why I didn't see his new film at Sundance, even though a bunch of people were saying it's good. But I didn't have time, so uh, this was this was just full of itself, and not even I for them to even consider this for your consideration is just embarrassing, honestly. Uh, what the hell is this? You hurt my feelings. Never heard of it. Amber Tamblin, David Cross. Somewhere in there. I don't know who Tobias Menzies is, but that's a very funny last name. (laughs) 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 Uh, And they had it's funny. They haven't uh, they haven't been so ambitious to go for best casting in any other film so far. No, Just the it one. Was, that was the one. That, that was, was the one the where one we needed best nailed. casting. We needed to invent the award for that one. That's fun. Uh, A24, Zone of Interest. I mean, yeah. Incredible film. Have you seen it yet? Yes. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's my favorite this, so far. This, this is this is an upset. I'm adding... I, I, I'm keeping a list of things to mention in my... Uh, 
Oscars video about things that I would like to have been nominated. Mika Levi, their score for this film is fucking incredible. And the fact that fucking John Williams got nominated for Indy 5 makes that a pretty clear case of like, oh yeah, I would get rid of that one. Uh, Mika Levi is fucking incredible. You want... Did, I know you weren't huge on Under the Skin. I would like you, you to give it a second watch because you, you said a lot of the same things that I said on my first watch. It kind of grew on me over time. Under but the, the score is fucking incredible. Oh, I actually quite like Under the Skin. Oh, you do now? Yeah. Okay, great. It's not like my favorite <clears throat> movie of all time, but it's it's a very good movie. It's a top 10 movie. Top of the 10 year. of the year. Kind <laughs> of. Yeah. Not all time. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, cinematography easily could have happened. Also, I guess I'm going to write that down. Um, I really like the cinematography. You know what got a nomination for cinematography? What? Maestro. <laughs> I really like the cinematography. All right. It wasn't, it, it wasn't I, it, anything that was like. <laughs> isn't that so sad? It's so sad. All right. Amazon Studios. Who are you wearing? It was black right. and white. Bradley Cooper. Ooh, look at this. They give us movie. a little. It's so funny to see what they send to the Academy. Saltburn. Another movie I'm very glad Isn't got nominated for nothing. Nope, it's not. It's from the director of. Uh... Another I, movie? I even forget the movie that she made. It was really bad. Uh, <clears throat> Promising young, young woman. Yeah. A bad movie that didn't even seem in the same realm as things that could be considered for Oscars, but somehow was at one point. Uh, shooting for the stars. Uh, American Fiction. Got a bunch of noms. Uh, they shot for the start. Like, how do you... Jeffrey Wright is doing well right now. He is. He has. Does he have a nom for Best Actor right now? Because he wasn't... I just watched that movie today. I, he was not even, like, close I to the, think the best. He, I like, do, like, even great. Yeah, I think he got nominated for Best Actor. I think Sterling K. Brown for sure got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. It's kind of... You know, it's funny. Like, the film... Without spoiling anything. It touches on the concept of, like... Like, fake... Um, virtue signaling white people that are like ready to support like a supposedly black product. It's like, I, I don't know if you saw um, Bamboozled, which I didn't, but I've heard that it's a lot like it and I know enough about it to know that that's probably somewhat accurate. Um, what's What's funny is like <laughs> this really does seem like kind of a movie where the Academy was like, oh, we got to put a black movie in there. And then they just put this one in where I mean, like there's better black movies from this year. Kokomo City, fucking incredible documentary, not even nominated. I probably won't be seeing it on any four year consideration campaign list, which is why it didn't get nominated, because that's how the Oscars works. The Oscars don't nominate the best pictures in the year. They don't even nominate what they think are the best pictures in the year or the best actors or best of any category. They only nominate from a select list of things that studios have sent them so that the Academy remembers what exists in a year and then they select from that. So if there's this, what we're looking at right now is literally just what the Academy even remembered existed in a year. They, they, tried, to, they tried to disqualify an actress from last year because she didn't have a four-year consideration campaign and she instead had a bunch of friends in Hollywood that she was like vouching for her. They were like, "Did you cheat?" They were like, "No, like I just knew enough people that like really liked my performance." In uh, Two Leslie, that was a scandal. They were about to disqualify her. They were about to disqualify her for not having a four-year consideration campaign. Isn't that fucked? <laughs> a, a process that n nobody who watches the Oscars even knows about. Like, I didn't know about it until just now. Although, minor correction, as mentioned in the highlights from last year, Andrea Riseborough, 
she did do like one i forget there was like a nuanced little like okay she did something that was like technically maybe against the rules that was more than just like not having a for you consider it yeah they were they were invested it seemed pretty clear that they were like trying to find a reason to disqualify her because of the lack of for you consideration campaign but she might have done something that was like okay you're pushing it um i forget i forget Air, supposedly better Cheetos movie, but not nominated for anything. Um, Creed 3 was a movie from last year? Okay. Didn't watch it. Cassandro didn't watch it. Silver Dollar Road. Boys in the Boat. Bottoms? Damn. This could have gotten... Is that Marshawn Lynch? Who's who's Marshawn Lynch? He's a football player. Oh, it is. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. he was fun. He was good. He was good at it. It's a good movie. Um, I would say Rachel Senate. I'd be happy with. She's fucking awesome. She deserves more attention. Uh, directing maybe. I like the screenplay, although I have my issues with it. Probably not Oscar material. Um, Rachel Senate. I'd be happy with. None of the others really. Um, I wish it was a bigger movie. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Foe, a good person. Land. What the hell is this? Amazon MGM doing a lot of weird shit. Years into a benevolent alien occupation, man- mankind is still adjusting to its new overlords. Landscape with the abil- invisible hand. Corey Finley. I oh dude, fucking. I liked his one of his movies at least. Actually, two. I think. Still, nobody else going for best casting. I feel like. Just winning by default. Is yeah. that the Corey Finley? Well, if nobody else campaigns for best casting except one movie, then they're a cinch for the win when they do yeah. eventually create the category. <laughs> so yeah, this is the director of uh, Thoroughbreds, right? Yeah, here we go. And then I asked for a screener for this movie and they didn't give me one, which is probably was probably a sign that they didn't think it was that great. <laughs> And it looks like 6.0 user rating, 53 Metascore. It looks like it was not that great. I was like, hey, I've enjoyed the other two films from this director. They're like, eh. <laughs> we don't even believe in it. All right. A million miles away. What the fuck is this? He's an ast- he, wa- he really wants to be an astronaut. I think he becomes an astronaut. Yeah, probably. All right. Not important. The, the burial. Shay and I are team Burry over Burry. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. This is apparently a movie that existed. And we're done with Amazon. Good um, for Amazon. Done with Amazon. Also, I didn't watch particularly any of those fucking done with Am- Amazon because they're about to charge more for the ad free version of their shit. Yeah, I just yeah. saw that. That was I I have Amazon Prime. I haven't watched any of those movies. Yeah. And I also think I might stop having Amazon Prime. I might I that. might stop getting free shipping on Amazon just over the because ads. that was just for spiteful reasons. All right, we're at Disney here. Star Wars a show Was that not a TV show? <laughs> Sorry. Was it I thought there was a television show. <laughs> One season? Okay, wait. This is probably the same website that they have for the Emmys then. Oh, they're just giving us samples. They're giving us all the tracks to the score. But like, why is this on your for your consideration website? All content. Go to film. Okay, yeah. All content. And then on the left, film. You're right. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you for helping. Uh, The creator did not even know it was Disney. Maybe Fox, I guess. Um, stunning boring. visuals a visually fulfilling they're very into the visual aspect of it Um, categories here we go they tried for everything Hans Zimmer didn't know um, Gareth Edwards I forgot that that's why it was even on my radar but it looked so boring that I didn't even watch it so the only nom it has is visual effects right now so I got something elemental Literally the worst Pixar movie ever made by far easily. Isn't that like 10 years old now? No. <laughs> it looks it looks like a recycled Pixar movie from 10 years ago, but it's actually a new film. <laughs> it's actually a new movie that they released in 2023. Isn't that crazy? 
Good for them. From the uh, from the director of The Good Dinosaur. Nothing but hits. It'll get um, nominated for stuff, right? It's well, probably it is. going to win, right? It'll... It's nominated for Best Animated Feature. That's it. I think it's funny that they shot for screenplay and Best Picture and Best Director and Cinematography and Editing and Production Design, which is a weird one for an animated movie, but I don't know what how you judge that. Maybe I need to look into it a bit better. Yeah, production design is a weird one because it's just fundamentally different when you're talking about a real life movie. You're talking about production design in one way, and yeah. and an animated movie. Cinematography was already enough to wrap my head different. around for Avatar. <laughs> uh, original song didn't even know there was one. Sound was shit. <laughs> Visual effects they were bad. All right. Here we go. Guardians Volume 3. Didn't watch it yet. I've heard it's the best one, and I've heard it's mid. There's a dog in it. There's a dog in it. Uh, shot did the for dog the moon. Get, did the get, dog get nominated? Uh, it might have been nominated for the Palm get, Dog. They didn't even try and get the, the dog nominated. They didn't even try to get the Palm Dog. I feel like that's just, you know, you're letting your one dog down. Haunted Mansion. The trailer looked like half decent. I don't like that it's over two hours. Haven't seen it yet. It's got Owen Wilson in it. It does have I'll Owen watch it Wilson for sure. it. in it. Sorry. Extra synopsis, no category. So they're just putting it here without actually um, nominating it for any category, which is kind of funny. Uh, I watched this. Yeah, me too. And it this is the nomination it has, is John Williams' score. I, I also like that which is a they went for Harrison Ford for Best Actor. That's a fun thing for them to do. <laughs> I, I like it's that they did it. It's a fun little troll. <laughs> it's a little trick, a little neat trick that they did. Um, I'm not... Uh, I forgot that Mads Mikkelsen was in it. I, f- I know, right? I wish, I wish he was I forgot most things about it. Adapted screenplay, really? <laughs> That's pretty. Look, they I really, love, I they love really best supporting have a actor. Good cast. Every, every supporting actor, like every fucking extra in the film, they're like, yeah. consider this. We had a really good supporting cast. Would you please consider the following? Bill, Bill, Bill. All right. Consider all of, like, and it's like a, a lot of big names. Ooh, Little Mermaid Zero Noms. That helped I make this that movie. existed and this year. That's fun. Out. So, yeah, Zero Noms. Sorry, Halle Bailey. Rob Marshall. And then the entire... Oh, my God. They <laughs> Please, please, for your consideration, the scuttlebutt. <laughs> A very bad song. They've got three songs... A very okay. bad song performed by Aquafina pretending to be a bird for not the first time in her career. And then David Diggs from Clipping doing a Jamaican accent that he cannot even pull off. Sorry. <laughs> for you. Please, please Oscars. <laughs> God. Which is like, it's cra- it, mm, a lot of... It's fucking crazy that they, they even tried with that one. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm honestly shocked and chagrined. Um, all right, here we go. Focus features. Let's see what Focus has got. Holdovers, Asteroid City, 1001, Everybody, Housekeeping for Beginners, and then additional films. Ooh. <laughs> I lo- That's so funny they have an additional films... There's a there's Area. films like, that we want to tell you about, but we definitely don't want you to confuse them with our favorite films. Yeah, we don't want you to think. We don't want you to think that these are the ones that we think are in the running. <laughs> I liked Inside. What was Inside again? Willem Dafoe is trapped. Oh yeah, yeah. in a house. <laughs> He's a real get me out of here. I didn't do anything. So you've seen the holdovers by now? Uh, yeah, it's boring. It's an Alexander I'm, Payne I'm, film in I'm 2023. I'm sad about that. I, I like Alexander Payne, but I... You like Master Payne? I really liked Sideways. I mean, I think everybody Sideways really liked Sideways, and brilliant. then every film he's made since has just been Oscar bait. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> Sideways is not the best barometer. To, like, I'm done with him. But Sideways <laughs> is really good. Sideways tanked 
the sales of Merlot. It, I know it had <laughs> such an influence on the global wine economy. <laughs> to be a uh, contrarian, I never drink wine, but I was at this like dumb thing because for my mom for Christmas, it was like, okay, there's like a painting and wine fucking thing like in out of town that you know it was a thing that we could an event that we could take her to and just be like an intimate like mother son and son's boyfriend and brother and brother's wife thing um and i tried the merlot and it was pretty good and i was like i will not let the film sideways convince me out of not trying the merlot and the merlot was one of my favorite things on the thing but it was all pretty cheap shit wine to yeah, Merlot is, is fine. There's nothing about There's Merlot just, that it, makes it shit inherently. I don't even think that they implied that Merlot was shit. They just said they Merlot just, is shit. They just, they're just the one guy fucking hates Merlot. I think he even says later that he doesn't hate Merlot. He just hates the way Merlot well, is done. Well, here's something. the thing. Half of the... 90% of the people that drink wine and talk about it and make it a part of their personality... Are people that are just kind of waiting for the signal to be told like what they're supposed to like and are just trying to pretend <laughs> to like taste things that maybe they don't or maybe they do and just be a part of something and fit in with other people and it's you know it's always weird when these professions are like to get good at like tasting wine you like taste a bunch of wines next like you do stuff that nobody ever does for fun no just to be a to, psalm, like, get good at tasting a wines. Sommelier. Yeah, and that's only so that you can help other people taste wine. So you can tell them what they're supposed to be tasting. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a weird thing. Like, it's it's weird, but um, it is one of those. Ooh, Sonic world today. Sonic's pulling a real my own mom with the cab sov. All right. Um. Yeah. Holdovers. Uh, most memorable part of the movie was watching a man in a business suit in the TIFF audience. By the way, like you're at a fucking film festival at the premiere and the director's in the audience. Every single fucking guitar song, sappy fucking musical break instrumental pulled out his phone like this right in front of him. Screen brightness full. Went to the Shazam app. <laughs> Tried to search for the song. Ran out of time, didn't work. Pressed the button again, didn't work. And he was close enough to me that it distracted me the entire time. But so, but not close enough that I could tap him on the shoulder. It was like one row ahead and then like three to the left. And I'm glad the movie wasn't better because that would have pissed me off. Because like the second or third time he did it, I was just like, this is fucking funny. This is kind of funny. This is yeah. like, this is the best part of the movie. And that's the most <laughs> memorable part of the movie for me was the Shazam guy in a fucking business suit. Not a care in the world that he's at a film festival and the director's in the audience and everybody else is being respectful and not doing things like that. They would be distracting to the audience. But he's there, and he, nobody stopped him. The people he were with were apparently not embarrassed enough to tell him that that's a thing that you shouldn't do. Um, and, you know, that was fun. I liked that. And not one song was successfully Shazammed. <laughs> he did it, like, six times. And it just, like, he was like, yeah. nah. he'd, like, keep pressing the button, like, two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> it never worked. You, you you kind of want to tell him like to get the fuck out of the theater, and also <laughs> I feel for you, dude. You know, like <laughs> you're really putting your really best effort in, and it's just not paying off. Yeah. So that was the best part of the holdovers. Uh, Asteroid City. I saw some people on Twitter were upset that the uh, original song didn't get nominated, um, but I think most people kind of expected written that this by Wes Anderson that this wouldn't really get nominated for much, if anything. I think most people were kind of expecting that, so um, it was fine. I'd like to see it again, but like, it's not the first Wes Anderson a Anderson movie I'd show to somebody. Um, if you've never seen a Wes, don't start with this one. Which one did you start with? Um, <laughs> well, there's a few different varieties of Wes because he's done stop motion a few times. Fantastic Mr. Fox would be a great one if that's up your alley. Uh, Grand Budapest would be a, like his one of his most easily accessible. 
Um, and then I guess like Rushmore, but he doesn't really make movies yeah. like Rushmore anymore. I'd go. That's one I'd of go funniest. Rushmore still. I still I still think Rushmore is is the epitome of his style. Is it? That's. I feel like I he think. doesn't make much movies like no, Rushmore anymore. I think though. he's. I think he's moving away from it and doing oh. other things. But nonetheless, I think it captures the essence it's of his, his style <laughs> the most. All right, what was a thousand and one? Let's check it out. Let's see. What was this film? A.V. Rockwell, 81 Metascore. It's on my watch list. And it premiered at Sundance. So it was one of the things I missed at Sundance. Probably because it wasn't on their online screening category. Well, didn't get nominated for anything, so I'll catch it later. Everybody. Everybody. What the fuck is this? Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Every space body. What this? What is this? Documentary space? featuring Julie Cohen, seventy-seven Metascore, six point four IMDb user rating, eight hundred one ratings, meaning nobody fucking watched it. Why is this even? Okay. It's a documentary. Nobody cared about it. Nobody cared about it. Nobody watched it. All right. Housekeeping for beginners. Yeah, we can't search up everything. All right. Polite society. This seems familiar by title, but we'll see. Polite. Society. Is this on my watch list? No. 75 Metascore. Nobody's seen this movie. Well, barely anybody. All right. Who cares? Of an age. All right. So we're into the we're into the uh, extra films category anyway. I liked Inside. Inside had really great cinematography, honestly. I think that like the framing and the overall look of the film was like really, really good. That was like one of the best parts, and it kept me like glued throughout. Um, no way in hell would it get best picture. Love seeing Willem Dafoe. It's funny that they didn't even. Oh, they did best actor Willem Dafoe. And they did. They did try for that. <laughs> um, it would have been just a a jab at Willem Dafoe. Yeah, like no, nah, we made a guy. movie with it's just all it's about literally. You, he's the only guy in it, <laughs> and we're gonna put it up for a bunch of nominations and not you. <laughs> I liked Inside. A lot of people hated it. I'm glad I saw that in theaters. What's funny about the movie Inside is it's one of the films that um, this has only happened twice in my life that I've bought tickets for and they canceled the screening because not enough people actually buy tickets. It was like me and whoever else I brought show up to the theater. They're like, that's not playing. I'm like, I have the ticket. They're like, oh, we canceled it because like nobody was watching this shit. (laughs) That's the second time it happened to me. If it was the sound of freedom, obviously that would only happen because they're the pa- they're trying to stop you from learning that um, that the uh, that uh, child fucking exists. Oliv- note to Olivia: censor those words. Sorry for saying those words. We want the video monetized, but you know, obviously, if it was the sound of freedom, then it, it's a different story. That's a conspiracy. But um, or maybe. Maybe the global elite with three parentheses on each side were trying to stop me from seeing the film inside because they don't want me to know that you can get stuck inside your house. That would be scary. Olivia, I say the P word like 50 fucking times in the Sound of Freedom video. Well, it's about P words. It's about wet ass P words. So did you censor each time? (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right. IFC Films, uh, Indian Foreign Children Films. I like IFC Films, actually. They have some good stuff. Um, American Star Film Details. What is this about? Uh, does it In have the, the FYC director, producers, writer? It doesn't even say what it's actually campaigning for. So... What I liked when Evil Lurks, Disappearance of Share Height was very boring. Um, damn, I thought Blackberry was IFC. What was Blackberry? No, it wasn't. So yeah, Blackberry got nominated for nothing because it had no campaign, which is very sad because honestly, you could easily take out John Williams for score, put Jay McCarroll there. It was a really sensible intelligent creative score love the score you could put writing in there it's a great screenplay honestly 
like working with the story that they had. They put it together really well for like film format. Uh, Glenn Howerton, honestly, yeah, could have been nominated for best actor. Like yeah. Blackberry. You know what's crazy? I In general, out, across the board, it's a, it's just a good movie. It's but a great, great it movie. It doesn't it's easily scream accessible. Oscars, and it came out in like October, in like <laughs> March. It could have been an Oscars movie if it had the right campaign. Yeah, and more American than Canadian <laughs> um, was part of the problem. But at least I think that this movie. Blackberry was successful enough that it at least put Matt Matt Johnson on like a bit more of a map, which I'm happy about, um, and it can hopefully get him his next projects funded more easily. Um, I found out earlier today, uh, Obama lists his top ten films of the year every year. Blackberry was on it, so Obama's seen fucking Blackberry, which is kind of funny. Yeah, but <laughs> Obama Blackberry. <laughs> And uh, it looks like we're not getting any real FYC information about any of these. And it looks like they didn't nominate any of these, probably because of how IFC organized these. This is apparently their for your consideration page. And they didn't make it clear and understandable enough for the Oscars voters. IFC, if you're listening, you have to make it easy enough for a baby to understand. Otherwise, you're not getting nominated. You need to make this, you need to make your web page baby proof. Otherwise, they're not going to remember that you did anything. We got raided by SaberSpark. Thank you so much. Hello, SaberSpark. Hello, Casmut. Hello, everybody. There was a raid. Hello. Oh, SaberSpark always has the funniest fucking thing that he tells people to say in chat. Horses are stupid. 458. Thank you so much. <laughs> Last time it was, what was it? Scar is lame. I was about to mute somebody, and then I realized everybody's saying it. It was like 500 people in chat showing up. All right. Um... We're going over the for your consideration campaign uh, from each studio from the Oscars. So everybody who's showing up right now, going to give you a little refresher. Um, hope you enjoyed Has Been Hotel. Vivzy is pretty cool. Um, every year, there are Oscar nominations. Those Oscar nominations exist not because the Academy is aware of which films are out in a year and which films are good. It's not like they're film lovers... You know, it's not like they're film nerds or anything that, like, actually seek out movies. Uh, no, they have to be reminded what films exist in a year or introduced to films that they'd never seen before. And so studios will campaign. They will have huge budgets for for your consideration campaigns. Nowadays, a lot of this is done digitally, so we get to actually see the markings of these from each studio on each website. And this website that's compiling all of them is called awardswatch.com. They do a great job compiling all of them every year. It's very insightful information. Um, so we're going through all of these because it's good information to note. If you're wondering why a great, amazing movie that they probably should have known about uh, was not nominated for anything, like Blackberry, the answer is probably because they didn't have a campaign. And it's very sad. It's very sad. And uh, yeah, so we're just going one by one, giving our comments on each of these. So Lionsgate, they campaigned for New Hunger Games. We're just going to open up some tabs here. Only six films, which is not a bad strat, but they got zero noms. Damn, Lionsgate. I like that tagline. Everyone for which hungers one? for something. For the Hunger Games. I did not watch this. No, me neither. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, you can see what they're shooting for. So this is essentially them telling the Academy, hey, we think that this picture in particular is best picture worthy or best director worthy. And they'll tell the Academy which category is to... Um, oh, Jason Schwartzman? Best sporting actor. Rachel Ziegler. I'm sorry, but she's canceled for saying that the original Snow White is outdated. <laughs> All right. John Wick Chapter 4. If they had a choreography category, then this film would be good. That's a, that's a category. If A24 is bold enough to nominate one of their pictures for best casting, an award that doesn't exist, <laughs> then I think I think Lionsgate should try to nominate John Wick for best choreography. 
Oh, no, cinematography. Almost. almost. It's <laughs> close. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> best stunt coordination is that a, is that a one that exists oh okay so look at look at Lionsgate following A24 nominating for categories that don't exist yet so they're not alone maybe there's like a day two of the Oscars that nobody knows about oh yeah Where maybe there's a coordination yeah. happens and there's casting and yeah maybe there's a second Oscars best accounting day. and damn like honestly I think I honestly Best casting, I was like rolling my eyes at. This, I actually think it's kind of cool that they're like trying to push the Oscar, being like, look, these people deserve to be recognized for this particular thing about this movie because it is true in John Wick 4. Or, like, it yeah. is no, like, hey, stunts and choreography. It's about the stunts. Yeah, stunts and choreography is a legitimate like subsection of film that's. That's big in a lot of movies. A lot of movies are a lot of movies are are very much like foundationally built on their stunt and choreography. Not only or, unrecognized, but like probably the majority of deaths in Hollywood in production of a film have been from stunt <laughs> workers. Like, right? Yeah. Like every every you hear in the news, like oh, somebody doing stunts like lost their leg. Or got like chopped up by a helicopter or something. Like, I know, but that's why that's that's, that's why, why they, they don't exist. recognize them is to, pr- to you. Just you shush. wouldn't. It would be really bad if shush, an actor shush. lost a leg, but if a stunt person was oh leg, yeah, if it's Tom not Cruise as bad. So, who does so, his own stunts, you have to lost have his leg. That would be a story. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Honestly, I, like I, there really, really should be a stunts category. They've compiled sound into one category previously too. You have room for one more now. Come on, just just. Just tighten up the Jimmy Kimmel bad jokes just a little bit from like three hours to two hours and 50 minutes, right? Three hours of Jimmy Kimmel bad jokes, two hours, 50 minutes, Jimmy Kimmel bad jokes. You'll have enough time for a few more awards. I think the Oscars ratings will do a bit better if you do that. All right. Are you good? Are you their God? It's me, Margaret. Never heard of it. Don't care. James L. Brooks. I've heard the name before. What the fuck is this? Who cares? The Blackening almost saw... It looked kind of predictable and, you know, it, lo- it looked like tra- somebody thinking they were Jordan Peele, but not living up to it. Joyride, didn't see. I liked some parts about the trailer. Um, there was a little child who said racial slurs to another child. I thought that was funny. Um, that was a good part of the trailer. Sisu, I heard about Sisu. I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah, it's on my watch list. And I don't know why. And it was, what was it? Oh, it was at TIFF. It was one of my TIFF maybe watch but didn't things. All right. Isn't Sisu a game? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. All right. Magnolia. Here we go. The, the Promised, Promised Land. Land. I've heard of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the new uh, Vinterberg, I think. Honestly. Oh, yeah. We'll that'll, see that'll be good. Yeah. Uh, Kokomo. Okay, there was a campaign for Kokomo. Nice. So the Oscars are racist. <laughs> and then what is this? Coming soon? Who cares? All right. So feature films. Magna- what? Uh oh. The Promised this is, Land. This is why the Promised Land didn't. The get Promised any Land did not get nominated because the web <laughs> designer did not fix the page before the Oscars <laughs> happened. Oops. That is why the Promised Land did not. Oops. The new Vinterberg, <laughs> no nominations because of this. <laughs> Unironically, probably why. <laughs> um, seating. Not sure what this is. Uh, immediate family. That's a lot of things. That I mean, got. those are audience awards. I mean, audience yeah, choice. you can submit yourself to like a bunch of like fucking film festivals nobody's heard of, and then do that in your trailer. Uh, so Magnolia, you're making the same mistake as IFC by not making it clear to the Academy what things they're supposed to nominate for what categories. You have fucked up. Press kit? No? You're just showing us the official I website. Like, That's it. I like the name Orphan Kill First. 
Orphan for skill. The boy. Yeah. So there's okay. Uh, the stones and Brian Jones also not nominated for it. Invisible Beauty also not working. Magnolia, what the fuck? Magnolia, what the fuck? Joanne Bay is not working. Deliver us again. Just the official website. No clear idea of what is supposed to be nominated. You give this to the Academy. They don't understand what to do with it. Magnolia, you fucked up. That's why you have no nominations. Operation Napoleon, whatever. A compassionate spy. Oh, here we go. Kokomo City. This is why. This is why. Kokomo City was one of the best films from last year. And the Oscars, obviously the Academy, since Jada Smith uh, made herself known. Not last year (laughs) or, or the year before. Um, during the Oscars So White thing. Since then, they have been very particular and very, like, aware of whether or not there are black people being represented at the Oscars. Kokomo City is a very obvious, very clear example of a film that they could have put, at the very least, in the documentary category. It's an 8 out of 10 film. It's It's great. It's awesome. I watched it twice. Uh, watched it online at Sundance and then uh, like short theatrical run in uh, Atlanta. Or actually, I didn't even watch it in Atlanta. I watched it in Montreal. Yeah. And then the league. What is this? I don't know. All right. So Magnolia, fucking absolute fumble. Very sad to see. Because what's what's particularly upsetting about this, IFC and Magnolia are like some of the smaller ones on this list. <laughs> Where it's like, ah, I don't know how much it costs to just get like a web designer to get your shit together. Like, it's not like an unreasonable, it's not like an unattainable goal that like you have to be Disney level to achieve, right? You just have to have somebody that's like aware of like what your actual struggles are or or what things you should be doing as a company to get recognized in the awards cycle, right? If this is what you're sending the Oscars, I'm sorry. It almost seems like you don't know what the fuck you're doing and there's a reason why you're small, <laughs> which is sad. Uh, and I like uh, I like IFC and I like MG- uh, sorry Magnolia. Um, I like they've released a lot of fucking great stuff. Um, but yeah, that's very sad to see. All right. This web page might take a while to load. Apparently for MGM UA, which is weird, but uh, I guess we'll. All right, MGM UA releasing awards dot com. Some of these might actually be down also because the nominations are out already and they're trying to like scrub their tracks because people like me are doing this. And making fun of them <laughs> when they don't get nominated for the things that they were campaigning for. So if let's say if let's say in the year 2019, sorry 2020, when the when when Disney tried to nominate The Lion King 2019 for every single, I think I archived this. <laughs> Can some? I really want to revisit this. Does somebody have the link? This is Disney's The Lion King 2019 for your consideration campaign that I archived because I knew I was making a video on it. Um, they've since deleted this, which is probably why a lot of studios have um, perhaps, you know, including uh, IFC or Magnolia. This is just speculation. Maybe the link just doesn't work. We don't know. Um, but I'm pretty sure Disney deleted this as well. You know, a year after it makes sense because it's outdated, but I would say it's smart to delete it like a day after the Oscar noms come out because it's kind of embarrassing if you don't win because I'm just going to go over it and make fun of you. Uh, (laughs) Best Supporting Actor, (laughs) Seth Rogen for playing Pumbaa. (laughs) Chuatil Ejiofor for playing Scar. Billy Eichner for playing Timon, John Connie for playing Rafiki, John Oliver for playing Zazu, <laughs> Eric Andre. But these are all voice acting. By the way, wait, these are all voice act. They there has never historically ever of all time been a single voice acting nomination for best actor. And and Disney was like, we can shoot for that. 
This was their campaign. <laughs> uh, Keegan Michael Key, JD McCrary. Oh my God, the worst actor. Alfred Woodard and Flores. Uh, yeah, I talked about this in my video. And then uh, again, I'm just going to point out every category that they possibly could have shot for, except animated feature, because their entire campaign was like, it's live action. They, they shot for best picture, not best animated. If they shot for best animated, they easily could have probably gotten a nom. But they were trying to pretend like it wasn't. So they got one nomina nomination for uh, uh, visual effects. And they lost. Anyway, um, we're going to check out uh, Neon because uh, apparently MGM UA is like not even loading. I wonder if I should try looking for archives for these. I'm wondering if these like were working at one point and then just uh okay here we go so they did kind of scrub it and we're going to the way back machine so oh that's 2022 so okay never mind this is for last year so did they even do one for this year what the fuck hold on hold on hold on hold on 2023 september all right there's a snapshot the Wayback Machine is such a valuable resource. Invaluable. Thank you for... So MGM might have done nothing this year. They might have done literally nothing. <laughs> they might... There might be nothing. I'm going to check one more of these snapshots and then just give up on it. Apparently Amazon owns MGM. So exactly. It's so it's probably in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They recently bought them. So that's exactly why. So uh, Awards Watch probably needed to update that. I'm just going to do one... I'm just curious about uh, Kokomo City to see if I can find a snapshot for that one because I want to see what it looks like. So they did have a bit of a campaign. All right. But they didn't say what it should. They didn't even say what category the movie was in. How are how is the Academy supposed to know that it's a documentary if you don't tell them? They don't watch movies. <laughs> Historically, verifiably. Anyway. All right. So we got uh, Neon. This is the old page. This is the old page from last year. So I don't know what the hell is happening with Neon. Did Neon it's have a campaign this year? I'm going to look this up individually. Neon FYC campaign 2024. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Neon's Anatomy of a Fall. All right. So uh, Awards Watch, not the best place to look anymore, apparently. Um, are these just posters or what are these? All right. So they just have different posters on this website. Just one second. So they have a four year consideration slate for neon. I don't know where this is coming from, but both of these sources are consistent with each other. Um, I'm just going to read them out loud. Uh, anatomy of a fall obviously got a lot of awards. So they, you know, probably sent a bunch of these, you know, not publicly, but privately to the uh, Academy voters. La Chimera, I would love to see that movie. Uh, Eileen, I forget if that was on my watch list. Old Boy, it's funny that they're doing a re-release Neon for like, for your consideration. Uh, I don't see it on this other one, so I don't know if that's actually true. I'll, I'll do this, I'll, I'll do this website as a more reliable one because that doesn't make sense for old boy perfect days that is a nomination for uh foreign language and then origin never saw uh ferrari no noms but apparently a bunch of people were talking for it talking about it uh robot dreams got a nom that was neon infinity poo was 2023 no way how to Blow Up a Pipeline? Was that? No way. I saw that fucking 2022. Maybe it didn't get released in the US until 2023. And then It Lives Inside was boring. Sanctuary didn't watch. Um, but I would like to see because I think that's the one with... Uh... Yeah, I'm talking about Neon right now. Um, I think Sanctuary is the one with uh, Christopher Abbott. And I like him. So, All right. We're going to Paramount. FYC Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. And Dragons. Everything I've heard about that movie is, you know what? I thought it would be bad, but it actually wasn't that bad. Is the consensus? Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's actually yeah, it's not bad. 
right? It's fine. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's very furry. Ooh, maybe I should watch it. All right. So this got nothing. Do you think it should have gotten nominated for any of these? Um, Wings of Time, best original no, song. Like I, I don't really think so. No, I, I mean I'm not invested in it winning an award. So I don't know that I would have been offended if it got nominated for something. But best actor, Chris Pine. I think that would have been a reach. Yeah. Uh, best adapted screenplay. Probably a reach still. Um, <laughs> All it right. was good. It was good. It was a Dungeons and Dragons movie, and it was good. But right. I don't know if that means Oscars. Best actor for? Did you watch Mission Impossible? I Dead did Reckoning? watch Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. How was it? Oh, it was. It was not good. Well, uh, prepare it, for the. It horde. shouldn't get. A, it shouldn't get any. Did it get some? I think it's nominated for visual effects. And maybe sound or something. Okay. Yeah, fine, whatever. Like you a couple can give sound to whatever you want, I guess. I think it's nominated for, uh, for a couple things. Maybe at least one thing. Ninja Turtles didn't get nominated for anything. I've heard that this should, and I believe them after having seen Elemental. Because that's an easy thing to get rid of and never nominate for anything ever. Um, so I Fred believe... Fred Hansner, Atticus yeah. Ross. All right, all right. Some, some people that the Oscars like in the score and uh, Elemental is like maybe one of the worst movies ever made and it's nominated so why not <laughs> I've heard it's better than Nimona Transformers Rise of the Beasts I don't think is nominated for anything I think they were pushing for visual effects they honestly this is one of those years where it's like every movie that's nominated it seems like they're all just aiming for every category like usually a lot of other years I've seen them just focus in, just hone in on like one or two categories where they know like, oh yeah. Like if I if I own Transformers, I'd be like only visual effects. I'd be like, please consider Transformers for only visual effects. That would be smart. What, best picture? Really? What do you have? Screenplay? Screenplay Transformers Rise of the Beasts? Cinematography. Costume design. Really? 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 You got to know what you're working with. All right, Paramount. Fucking dinguses. Searchlight Pictures, which is a subsidiary of Disney, but has their own FYC campaign for some reason. All of Us Strangers. Great movie. Really good. Um, but it's British, so nobody watched it. Andrew Haig. Is he Irish? Same thing, right? <laughs> They might hate each other sometimes. <laughs> um, Paul Mescal was fucking awesome. He got a nom last year, right? For uh, After Sun. Um, oh, was that him? Yeah, After Sun guy, Paul Mescal. Okay. He's great. Jamie Bell, he he was great. Um, and then Andrew Scott, Andrew was, Scott was great too. Yeah. yeah, all great performances, great screenplay, great directing. I, you know, best picture. You could you could you could give any of these honestly easily. This is what I, like, I would consider this best picture worthy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, any of these you could give would not be unhappy. The Oscars probably didn't watch this movie and they were like, "You icky gay people." Sorry, <laughs> is probably what they said. Chevalier, fair argument. Um, right? <laughs> didn't watch this. Not sure what it is. They said icky icky ew ew. Uh, Flame and Hot has a nomination. It's a film from Eva Longoria. From Eva Longoria. It's an origin story of the Flame and Hot Cheetos. And it's not even true. And I watched it, and the entire thing is literally just bootlicking corporate propaganda of like, yo, I'm a Mexican. I'm coming from the streets and. If I just work hard enough, then they're going to let me design the flavor of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. And that's the movie. And Joe Biden made a tweet about how he liked the movie. <laughs> Not sure. What, uh, Joe Biden doesn't release the top 10 films every le uh, every year from him. Unless I I'm mistaken. I would love to see Joe Biden. But he, but he definitely 10. talked about how great this movie was. And I, I feel like it's because it's... It's literally it's it's an unethical movie. It's maybe the most unethical movie of the year. 
uh, in the sense that it provides a false sense of the American dream and is literally just propaganda telling people like, oh, yeah, just be the best employee for your corporate o- overlords. And that's a success story, which is just entirely unrealistic as a person that's worked many, many, many corporate jobs and you know corporately owned jobs and customer service jobs and (sighs) minimum wage and fucking manual labor jobs not true not true i have experience like fucking 14 different jobs before i settled on youtube last repair shop not sure what that is don't care next goal wins i heard it's bad i could have watched it at tiff and didn't it was one of the last screenings that I could have watched. And I was like, it was one of those where it was like, ooh, Taika Waititi. Everybody's like trying to get it. And I was like, oh, we didn't get it. You know, maybe we could try for like some of the resell tickets. And then all the reviews were like, this is actually shit. I was like, okay, we're not going to spend $500 on a ticket. All right, let's not do that. Uh, Poor Things, incredible. Favorite movie of the year. Shay, you haven't seen it yet, right? I have not. No. Incredible. Um screenings uh categories uh i think it's nominated rough i think mark ruffalo is nominated yes ruffalo is nominated uh which is pretty cool emma stone's nominated yorgos is nominated it's nominated for best picture it's nominated for quite a lot i think it might have editing production design even uh i think it might might have costume it definitely has cinematography um it does not have visual effects. Casting again doesn't exist. Oh, they're going for it. <laughs> There's competition. All right. There's competition. There's a concerted effort to make casting a real category. I respect that. Look, they do have ten supporting actors and actresses that they think are worthy of the award. Damn. They Honestly, could fill up both supporting categories by themselves. I would have liked Willem Dafoe. I would have liked Christopher Abbott. And then I don't know what her name is, but the lady who played the fucking uh, French pimp or whatever. She was fucking awesome. Um no, yeah. She the she was a she was a very commanding screen presence. She was fucking awesome. I would see her in a billion movies. All right. Um, wait, did I miss one for Searchlight? Yeah, I did. Uh, theater Camp. I saw this. Uh, it was bad. It was bad. It was like it thought it was the office. Um, it thought that what it was doing was hysterical. I don't fucking understand how they could nominate it for fucking anything. That is just embarrassing. Uh, we're going to continue down this list. All right. We got, uh, what do you do? We did search. We did searchlight, right? Yeah, we did. Flaming hot. All right. <laughs> Flaming hot was, was a searchlight joint. All right. Netflix. God damn. So American symphony haven't seen. It's on my watch list. Could be cool. Camp courage documentary short. I think that might be nominated. Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. Uh, I had my calendar marked and then didn't watch it because I got busy and uh, doesn't seem like anybody's talking about it anyway, so who cares? El Conde is nominated for cinematography. I love Pablo Lorraine, so I will be watching that at some point later. It's a film about if Augusto Pinochet was a vampire. <laughs> yes, I've seen like the first 15 minutes of it. Oh, why did you see the fr- did you go to sleep? Yeah. Was it boring? No, <laughs> I I was just tired. I I took a big hit and Oh, a big I decided, hit. Decided uh <laughs> clock to the job. 15 minutes was enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, so they do list the awards for Netflix, which is, which is nice. They help the Academy understand what they're supposed to be nominating for. Um, although these are actually just awards that it got. So I'm not... Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is for your consideration, but it's not explicitly saying what it should be considered for. Is it? 
Uh, yeah, on the right. Oh no, no, no those are awards those are that awards it. That oh, actually so won. this is yeah, this is nominated, Oscars. but but that's so the maybe actual nominations. Perhaps if so we it's use, probably been updated. If we use the Wayback Machine, maybe it will say yeah. So this could just be outdated. Um, Fair Play, not too familiar with. Uh, Chloe. Okay, I just want to kind of know who's in it and who's directed it, but uh, Leo honestly deserves to be there over Elemental easily. <laughs> uh, Maestro does not deserve to be nominated for anything. It deserves to be executed by a firing squad uh, as a film. I think everybody agrees with that. May December should have been nominated for Best Picture, only nominated for um, what screenplay and like. Is it even nominated for performance? Is it just nominated for screenplay and that's it? Like, it didn't get many nominations. No, it I did didn't not. See its name a bunch. No, it's fucking awesome. Did you see it? Did I ask you if you seen it? No, I. It's fucking. I'm I interested. I loved. I was very 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 impressed with it. Um, I thought it was fucking awesome. That was a nine out of ten for me. So yeah, one Oscar. Um, original screenplay. Uh, Numona has got a nomination for best uh, animated. Uh, Niad has got a nomination for actor Annette and supporting Benning? actress and supporting actress. I think. Sorry. Annette Benning. Yeah. And then it's funny that they did a uh, com- campaign for Rebel Moon. I'm kind of interested in seeing what the Wayback Machine has to say about this one to see what um, they were actually campaigning for here. Um, kind of curious about that. Not available. Okay. So I'm not allowed to see if the page was different before. Um Behind the scenes, wow. The makeup was so good. Zack Snyder's such a visionary. Um, Rustin makes me feel good. Uh, that's nominated for actor or supporting actor. It's nominated for one of the acting categories, and that's it. Society of the Snow is nominated for Best International. A lot of... Uh, there's a... There's a uh, I've seen this comment more than once online at, at this point. Uh, people saying that if Society of the Snow was an English film, like a film not in Spanish, that it would have been nominated for everything. I don't know if I agree with that. It's a pretty fucking stacked year. It's a pretty fucking stacked year. I think it should have been nominated for more. Don't get me wrong. Um, best Sound would have been like an easy thing to nominate it for. Um... The score is pretty good. I mean, take out John Williams and like throw a dart at any movie released in 2023. You have a better score than John Williams for fucking Indy 5. Um, so, you know, no controversy there. Should have been nominated for more. Only nominated for best uh, foreign language, which it's not going to win because one of the best picture noms is also nominated. So it spoiler alert, it's not getting in. Um, never heard of Stamped from the beginning. The after, I don't remember if it's on my watch list or not. The dads, I don't know anything about. Deepest Breath. What the fuck is that? Uh, I'm going to look it up real quick. Maybe they were... Uh... Oh, David Attenborough. Okay, I'll add that to my watch list, I guess. He's involved. Um, IMDb is being very slow, so I guess uh, that's maybe never loading. Oh, there we go. Uh, 7.769 Metascore, so I guess not super well received. Um, The Killer, David Fincher, I wish we could see what they tried to nominate it for. Let's see if the Wayback Machine is going to tell us anything about this or not. Ooh, we do have a Wayback Machine for The Killer. Hold on. Uh, November 29th, 2023. Let's see if this is any different. Shout out to the Wayback Machine, web.archive.org. Very helpful. I like the idea of archiving things on the internet. So it lists the awards. It doesn't really list what they're supposed to be nominated for. So Netflix is kind of dropping the ball with this one, even though they got nominated for a fucking lot. So 
I'm actually confused about that one because, you know, IFC, Magnolia, it's pretty obvious why they didn't get nominated for anything. By the way, she took took a break and didn't say anything. Uh, if you're wondering why he's, he's not talking. Netflix, they also didn't make it obvious for the Academy. They just kind of listed what they've also been awarded. Uh, so I find that interesting. Other years, Netflix has... Um, made it clear they've been like hey here's the film uh that we want you to pay attention to here's what we want you to nominate it for um at least in this in this section it does say what subject so like victim victim suspect documentary narrative short we know it's a short right weathering so this is a wes anderson short haven't seen it apparently it's good i think it's nominated no maybe one of his he i think he released like four shorts last year one of them is nominated um, I don't remember. Um, victim suspect, haven't seen it. Weathering, haven't seen it. All right. So Henry Sugar was nominated. Okay. All right. We got four left. We got Sony. Cross the Spider Verse, Dumb Money, Napoleon, Suzume. So Sony, whose cookies I am accepting, I will always accept the cookies of Sony. Only nominated or only did a campaign, sorry, a four-year consideration campaign for four films. Two of them are nominated. Two of them are nominate, nominated for Oscars. Only four of them they submitted. So Sony fucking killing it, honestly, in terms of like what they're <laughs> trying to achieve and how much effort they put into it. All right. Four-year consideration synopsis categories. Best picture, best director, best cinematography. I mean, sure, score. Take out Hans Zimmer. You have a pretty easy, <laughs> like, uncontroversial pick for score. You just take out Hans Zimmer. Visual effects, honestly, honestly, visual effects. I could, I would, I would, I would totally be down for visual effects for Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Um, editing, even honestly, maybe, but like that's a tough one. Production design is a weird one. Again, like an animated movie. I'm like, I'm not sure about it. Um, sound. And then, yeah, obviously, best animated feature it got a nomination for. So that's cool. Dumb Money. I skipped this at TIFF. Well, probably would have watched it if it made sense to time wise. Look at this. Sony only tried to get best adapted screenplay. Sony Pictures for a consideration campaign. They they listed four films. Two of them are nominated. And of those four films, it looks like they're being like particular about which awards. Yeah. So like in terms of like what they're putting out and what they're getting back from it, Sony's doing the right thing. Sony's doing the right thing for like Oscars. Um, they're trying to be targeted. To be fair, yeah. I don't think that they're making dumb it money easy. Is, Sorry. I don't think dumb money was good and was should have gotten a, a screenplay nom. But. I mean, probably shouldn't have gotten any but they knew <laughs> they at least didn't go for, they knew way for everything too but much. one <laughs> yeah. um napoleon they shot there for a bunch go. and they got two right so they have visual effects now i think right now and then i think production design um i think napoleon has two noms right now and then suzune i'm not sure what the fuck this is and they tried to do best suzume animated. best animated i'm gonna Look this up on IMDb and just see what the hell it is. All right. 7.7 7 out of 10. It looks Japanese as fuck. As in anime as fuck. Sorry. Uh, and then 77 Metascore. Sure. Watch list. Why not? All right. It was for my consideration. You're welcome, Sony. All right. Uh, oh, this is from the guy that made Wolf Children. Oh, I should remove that from my watch list. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Teacher's Lounge, we now have Sony Pictures Classics. Um, and Teacher's this is the only one? <laughs> yeah, Teacher's Lounge is good. Sorry. Oh, you watched it? Yeah. I haven't I, seen it yet. I, I tried it. to watch it a lot earlier. I tried to get a screener because I was like playing at a film festival that I... Yeah, um, I caught it at the Vancouver Film Festival. Nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I had COVID. I couldn't see any in-person screenings. Yeah. That sucked. Um, I'm going to see if the Wayback Machine shows me any... Oops. Um, it's going to be foreign language film. Well, I know that, but I'm just seeing if... Because 
the link says sonyclassics.com oh, slash awards information. Ah, okay. I want to see if they shot for more than what they got. Um, so I know that one's nominated for foreign language, but I want to see if they... Oh, here we go. So they did Wayback Machine. Thank you. We can see what they actually tried to nominate. So they've since updated. Um, not sure what any of these are except The Teacher's Lounge, which I'm excited to watch and I expect will be good. Uh, Shay, what would you give it? 7 out of 10? 8 out of 10? Teacher's Lounge? Yeah, 7, 7.5, seven 7.8. Seven, yeah, All something right. like that. I guessed it from your tone of voice. That's how good I am. All right. Uh, Universal. Trolls. Oppenheimer. Migra- <laughs> Migration. That's a... F- did it even... Wow, I forgot it even came out last year. I thought it was 2024, but yeah, I did watch it at the end of 2023. What is it? Is it an animated it's an, it's, movie? It's, from the, it's an animated movie from the same studio as uh, Minions, okay. and it's bad. It's fucking terrible. Probably their best movie. Better than Minions? It's, it's better... Well, I haven't seen Minions, but I can't even watch the trailer for the Minions, so... Okay. Like it, minions are so anno- like this. This at least pretended to be not minions, which was an ultimate troll because at the beginning of the film, a la Pixar, they showed a short at the beginning, and the short was minions. So that fucked me up. Um, Mario Bros. movie also made by Illumination, which is funny that they don't have Illumination presents at the beginning. Um, wow, they own like three. I like that they put no spacing between Trolls Migration and Mario. Oh yeah, Bros. these are the animated them together as yeah. This as is the real movie, and, and these then, are the animated fake baby movies. Yeah, yeah. They do um, want to show that separation for your consideration. Mario Bros. movie. Nice. I'm so happy. If they were Disney, they would have said Best Picture. If they were Disney, they would have said Best Picture. Universal props. Props for understanding that the Mario Bros. movie is not best picture and you're not going to try and you're going to be honest about what you are. <laughs> Thank you, Universal. They did go for best director. I don't care. They didn't go for best picture. <laughs> if they were Disney, they would have done that. Uh, and no, yeah, they would have gone best actor Chris Pratt. Honestly, they would have done if they were Dis- Disney 2019, The Lion King. I'm glad I archived because no one would believe me. <laughs> That, that's something like if I told people no one would no one would believe me. Original song Peaches, you laugh at that? People were saying that it had a ch- it was technically eligible and people were like rooting for it. And if let's say that you know, if I were organizing the Oscars as a business, I'd be like, okay, thrown in Peaches best original song or just even a animated feature for the Mario movie, which sucks but is way better than Elemental which is nominated. I would throw it in there because then maybe more people would watch the Oscars, right? So if if I was making those decisions and rigging the whole thing and, you know, trying to get more people to watch the Oscars, then I would do that. But they're dumb. And we got Cheetos movie as the uh, conspiracy uh, <laughs> illegitimate <laughs> nomination instead. Uh, migration. Let's see what they were even trying for. Just animated and that's it. Editing, sound, no. Sco- that was the best part of the movie. John Powell, okay. John Powell could get it way easier than uh, fucking John Williams. John Powell was the only competent part about this movie. Love John Powell. Um, yeah, none of these others even close to worth nominating. If 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 I open this, the for you consideration campaign, it was just John Powell. I would just buy a ticket to whatever next fucking universal movie existed. I'd be like, thank you. You know what you are. Somebody made a good decision here. Trolls. <laughs> uh, really going for best director on the trolls. Best director and best editor. They think that <laughs> the most important parts of the animated feature are directing and editors, I think. And original songs. They really Best art that. direction is not a category, so it's interesting that they're trying to make that one. That's kind of cool. That's good. It's I, bold. I think that trying to create categories is the best thing that people. Should we do. should. We should. <laughs> we should encourage more studios to try and create new categories that don't exist. Is what I think. We. Should. <laughs> I think that every studio for your consideration campaign should only be 
for categories that don't exist. I think that that should be the new trend, and we should reward films that do that. Um, and then Oppie, obviously trying to nominate everything. Thir- it got 13. It got 13. <laughs> it got 13, so... A swing and a not it miss. Hit most places. That One, I've two, even three, tried. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It got all but one <laughs> that it shot for. Well, no, because um, it shot for multiple in some of the categories. Like it shot. Well, for, yeah, it, Florence Pugh didn't get one. You're right. Yeah, um, Matt Damon I like didn't Florence get one. Pugh. But it, out of the categories total that it shot for, yeah. which one didn't it get? Let's see. Not costume. I think costume is the only one that it didn't. Right? They had good costumes. No, it got VFX. Hats? It got VFX. No way it didn't get VFX. It didn't? Oh, wait. Is that the... Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, actually that's a, kind that's of funny that it doesn't get visual effects. Well, because he Cause does it, everything they... in real... He actually detonated a nuclear bomb on Tokyo. Just for the movie. Yeah, he actually killed Japanese people for the movie. So that's why he doesn't get it. Sorry, Christopher. Sometimes there's such thing as too much commitment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, suck it. All right. Last one. Warner Brothers, Barbie, color purple, and these are not opening in a new tab. I have to do this individually. Um, consider. Best pick. Best director. Best adapted. Best actress. Best supporting. Wow. <laughs> it's great in the acting categories they really they're like shooting for everyone like Helen Mirren you were in like two seconds although last year there was a nomination for somebody that was in two seconds of a movie yeah. that was for um, the Spielberg the Fablemans yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right there was a two seconds in the movie recognizable name so the Academy if, they, they're if they're going to do that, then you should you should yeah, they're shoot definitely for that. open to thirty seconds of screen time. They definitely don't watch the movies and just look at the for your consideration campaigns and see the most recognizable name. Case in point, the Fablemans and this year's Indy Five John Williams. They looked at the movies. They saw a recognizable name. They said, "Easy, we don't have to watch it." Um, sure. Yeah, there's some great stuff in this movie, honestly. Um, Color Purple, the CP, CP movie. Um, What did this get? Like an acting nom? I think this has an acting nom. One of these? I don't remember. All right. Didn't watch it. Maybe I never will. Wonka, or as I call it, Wanker. Um... That was the last. That's already out. That was last year. It's been out for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's been out for a while, and I didn't see it. Uh, last one. All right. They made uh, an original song for it. Uh, yeah, they did. It was a. Did you know it was a musical? Rowan Atkinson. Did you know um, that Wonka was a musical? The first one. No. Well, the, like or the originally. one in twenty twenty three with Timothy Chalamet. Timothy. Like this, this, the, I didn't, I didn't even know that it was not original. I thought that this was, like, I didn't know. What that, do you mean not original? Well, I didn't know that the, that people told this part of the story. Like this is the prequel of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, it might be original. I mean, getting adapted screenplay doesn't mean it's not original. It just means it's based on a previous IP. Yeah. So I, f- I feel like I'm familiar with the fact that, I mean, they did sing songs in in the original one. Are you talking about like it was a, it was a musical musical? Apparently, so this advertised itself as not necessarily a musical, and then people bought tickets and then went to it, and then it was very much a musical, is what I heard. Uh, which has been a trend recently. Apparently, that happened with the new Mean Girls film and a couple others. Is it a musical just because it has songs in it? Like, no, I it was an actual. Mu- it was an actual musical. Musical is what I'm saying. Because okay. I don't think like The Lion King is a musical. I think The Lion King is definitely a musical. What the fuck are you talking about? It's got songs in it, but it's not a musical. It's just a, a it's movie. It's a Broadway with songs musical. It. It's got like fucking ten songs in it. Yeah, but if it's a, no, it's got five songs in it. And musicals, <laughs> legitimately, they sing everything in musicals. 
I don't think that's the like definition. The whole thing is in musicals. Everything is music. All right. You know, well, like the runtime of music in in uh, Les Miserables is <laughs> the whole runtime of the movie. I don't think that's how it's defined, but that was the last film. And uh, thank you, Awards Watch, for uh, organizing most of the For Your Consideration campaigns. Apparently, some of the links didn't work, but that could just be because we accessed them too late. Um, doesn't matter. Some of them it's not worth to revisit or go into or delve into. I'm really glad we took a 25-minute Cheetos detour because that was the best part. Uh, really glad I watched... I thought I was going to regret watching the Cheetos film. <laughs> I'm glad I watched it just to have the context <laughs> before I saw that Biden premiered <laughs> at the White House. <laughs> Honestly, that, that was worth the experience. So yeah, Cheetos film... Not that bad if you're making content. Um, fucking yeah, that was great. That was that was a fun for your consideration campaign. A little uh, examination. Uh, do you have any locks for the Oscars, Shay? Do you have any locks? If locks, let's say you like, were Scott, that you are were doing going a Scott's lo lock of the week. Let's say you were doing a Scott's lock of the week. Let's say you were making my lock. lock of the week would be. I don't think I have any locks. I don't know anything that just should win. I think, I think that Ambulance actress is going to Lily Gladstone. VFX. That's my luck. Actress is going to Lily Gladstone because the Academy doesn't understand when they could potentially ever, ever get a chance in any other situation to give it to a Native American woman. So they're going to do it. Um, I think that's why. Not that she did a bad job, but that's why she's going to win. Do you? Th okay, here's here's the here's the big one. What's getting best sound? Uh, Zone of Interest, which is a movie that the sound is the whole point, or Oppenheimer, which is the loudest movie. What's getting best sound? Both are nominated. I don't think Oppenheimer is going to win for sound. Ooh. I don't know. I don't think so. Could get it. It could. Can we finally watch the Funny Travolta movie? Yes, we can. Yeah. I think we'll we're watch just that in like five minutes. Yeah, I think we're just a little tired of of uh, Chris Nolan sound. I think Chris Nolan does great sound. I think he does fantastic sound. <laughs> I mean, but he gets ripped every single movie because people don't watch in theaters. And then no, even in theaters, it has like bad mixing. Like, I feel like I need... Did you watch Interstellar in theaters? I did not. That's the only one I haven't like, seen Like, there's there's theaters. parts of, like, fucking hospital... Like, everybody... I, I don't even have to say the scene. Everybody knows. Hospital bed scene, fucking uh, Michael Caine saying words that no one can hear because the score is so loud. And it doesn't seem like we're not supposed to be able to understand what he's saying. But he's, he's saying words, and we don't have subtitles because it's theaters. That's a pretty consistent problem with Nolan films. Um, at least the past three or four. He cares more about the feeling of being in the movie than what's actually going on on screen. He doesn't. Well, he well doesn't he knows the what script, so it does. You know, he knows what words. <laughs> yeah. He wrote the script. <laughs> um. So yeah, it might go to the loudest movie. We don't know. Um. All right. Anyway, that was a fun. That was a fun thing. We're going to watch uh, Blow Out. I'm going to set that up real quick, and we're going to start that real quick. Very excited to see this film. All right, here we go. Uh, what would you rate <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the for your consideration campaigns? <laughs> All the nominations. Collectively? Yeah. Uh, like a four. I'd give it a three. It, it could be more well-organized. Yeah. I think they did a bad job. Just have like a format that you have to submit it in and then have one central website with all of the for your consideration honestly, movies. Honestly, if they have so many rules for like what can even be eligible for awards of like, oh, Black Swan borrowed too much from Swan Lake. And then they change the rules like fucking two years later. It's like, okay. Oh, Barbie is best adapted because it's based on the characters of Barbie. 
but Maestro's best original, even though it's based off of a real life person who has a much more thorough narrative that you're borrowing from. I'm sorry, Borrow is a uh, sorry, Barbie is a much more original screenplay than Maestro. Maestro, you're basing it off of a narrative that exists. Barbie, you're yeah. basing it off of a name that exists. That's it. <laughs> yes. So fuck your rules. The Oscars are dumb. We're gonna do a stream. Anybody watching this on the highlights channel? March 10th, Oscars. Go on the main YMS channel on YouTube if you want to see the stream on YouTube. Twitch.tv slash YMS plays uh, or kick.com slash YMS if you really feel like going to that website. Stream in there too. Um, thank you. Hey everybody, Olivia here. Thanks again for watching. It's February 2024, so let's go over the Patreon credits. My $5 and up patrons are Speak of the Joker, Silver Wind, Toby White, Scott S., Joan of Fart, Skinot On, Happy the Knife, Coolest Shirt, George Salazar, www.openclassactions.com, Emil, Blank, Judum the Kinslayer, T King, Saliv88, Electrica is an ordinary bad gamer, Yup Yup Yup, Caden Mac, The Super One Player, Zachary Kane, Gilly Flower, Purple Fire, Gabriel Herrera, and Lemonade Warrior is participating in the hit game Among Us and is considered the encroacher. Let me just say, you guys are all awesome. I was caught off guard by how many people left kind comments after last month's credits. It makes me happy to see people being so accepting. You guys are also, like, way too sweet. I'll admit I was a bit nervous at first about adding this avatar to videos, but it looks like I've mostly gotten positive feedback. Also, the post-credits talk in last month's video have given me a bit of an idea. Sometimes when Adam reacts to things, they're not long enough for mid-rolls and don't make as much revenue. So I think from now on I'll do like a bit of a Q&A segment after the credits. Just leave a question in the comments below and I'll pick a couple to answer in next month's credits. They'll be easier to find if my name is in the text somewhere. Also, if you have any fan art, you can send it to my email right here and I'll feature it in the end credits, as long as it's safe for work and relevant to YMS highlights. Take care, everyone, and thank you all for your support.